Hey, good day, big bikers. Well, it's kind of a ride that I was getting out of bounds. It's just been so hot lately. But I just thought what I'd do is I would show you through some of the modifications that I've made to the Husqvarna Norden 901 Expedition so far. So obviously the first thing is the decal. So when I picked up this bike, it had the dealer decals all over it. And I thought, well, that didn't look too bad. And I really liked the idea of the way that it was protecting the paint and everything. And I thought, you know what? I contacted uh, Rival Inc., uh, who... Uh, obviously did the decals and they've got a template I figured because they've got a template for the 901 they might be able to do some um, design for me for the bike so that's what they did I got them to do up a design for the 901 we played with it a little bit and we ended up with this now grey on paper was probably a little bit lighter than that but it's not too bad and it's actually very similar to the grey on the latest model so really like the topography in, in that it just really makes it really clear that I like following lines on a map so obviously starting down the bottom here we've got the uh, foot for the side stand uh, I've done the GPS mount for the phone I've done the um, USB port over that side for the uh, power so that's instead of having a, a 12 volt um, see that socket I've got a USB and USB-C in there but just in case you weren't aware you can follow BBA on YouTube or on uh, Instagram Big Bike Adventures a little bit of BBA everywhere on this one so it's quite nice riser bars so back to the modifications riser bars here so I've got a 42 mil riser in that I put the temperature monitor sensor there I haven't changed the mirrors yet it's kind of like I'm getting used to it and to be honest I haven't ridden it that far the latest big move I've done is I've put these I took the standard racks off and I put the Outback Motortech on uh, Outback Motortech I had on the Africa Twin they were on the bike when I had the crash with the car and uh, I am convinced that uh, it was those crash bars I don't know what they make this stuff out of um, but it's uh, it's pretty solid and it was actually the crash bar on the bike that saved my leg from impact with the car and so I'm pretty happy to uh, I'm pretty happy to put Moscow Moto back on back on the bike um, and it's also going to provide a little bit of protection I don't think the stock uh, racks would have provided any protection the stock racks are mounted by two points so there's one to one there and one there and then obviously the cross brace the Moscow motor has got one two three braces and then the cross brace so really really solid fit and obviously these bars can take the Moscow Moto stuff too so that's kind of where I'm heading I think I made the decision last time not to put the um, RL80 on or use the RL80 so much more because it just didn't fit the stuff that I had it was plenty of plenty of space but it just didn't fit the gear that I had and I don't want to go buy a new camping gear so I know it fits in the uh, Moscow Moto Backcountry 35s which will sit on there no problem at all. That's really, really solid now. Very happy with that. Um, the other thing I've done is under the seat here, I've put in the factory. This is the Husqvarna kit. So what you basically do is you remove the snorkel. So the snorkels are gone. There's snorkel plugs down there. There's airbox plugs for up under here so you keep the airbox plugs but you get a, a sleeve that goes down inside that with some um, oiled foam so the only air intake is now just under the seat there is a bar that goes across underneath in there so I'm not sure whether to take that out or not I'm just going to ride it for a bit and see so it's basically a pre-filter on top of the airbox now one of the problems with this and people did tell me about it beforehand was that um, you can only have the seat on high which is not actually a problem for me because it spends most of its time so it spends most of its time up in the high mode anyway so that's not really a drama um, I've had a, <laughs> had a couple of people so I've had a couple of people say to me how easy it is to get to the airbox in that, oh well, that's it, you pull the seat off 
then you're right there. So, um, they're all the modifications I've done. I've spent a bit of time playing with suspension settings, front and rear, really easy to do. In fact, the instructions for it are on top of the airbox. Uh, so, oh, yeah, pop that. Come on. So the instructions for the suspension are actually sitting right on top of the airbox. There we are. Uh, and then all the fuse instructions. So, yeah, look, you know, in terms of working on this bike, it is just so easy compared to... And even taking these off. So I had to take the panels off. So I'll come back to the seat. I had to take... I'm doing it all with one hand. And my, my gummy hand, too. The panels... There's four fasteners holding that on so you take that off or you take the seat off obviously take the side covers off so they just pop off easy four bolts holding that on four bolts holding that on four bolts holding that side on the whole thing just comes off and just exposes everything so it, you know in terms of access to everything and then the tank is just re accessible right underneath so it's a really really cool bike to work on so the one thing I haven't done is put the cat delete pipe in um, I'm just reading so many conflicting info, so much conflicting information. Now this thing is so freaking hot, it's just ridiculous that they should put the exhaust right beside your ankle, uh, but it is so hot, and I've got the pipe for it. Everyone, I've, I'm just reading so much conflicting information about what it does if you take that out. Now it makes it loud, obviously. But people are talking about it, you know, causing overfueling and burning pistons and, you know, um, uh, uh, voiding warranty, all that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, hmm, I'll, I'll, I'll get through, there you go, simple as that, I'll get through a summer, see how I'm going. Um, but all the forums, all the information, all the Facebook pages, everything, are just in sheer conflict about whether or not doing that cat delete is something that's worthwhile or not. So, uh, bike's still under warranty. I don't want to go messing around with that. Certainly don't want to be, you know, burning up pistons. One of the reasons I put that pre-filter set in is because of the, uh, the fear of dusting, which is something that was mentioned quite a lot. I can see how that would happen. Um, so that on top there is the pre-filter, the, the foam filter inside the airbox is, is obviously doing most of the filtration, most of the work. After that ride with Chris, where we did quite a lot of work, did about 1300 kilometers in the dirt, um, the filter was dirtier than I would have expected, um, but so easy to clean it wasn't a problem, so I'll just keep an eye on all that. Anyway, there you go, a quick update. BBA, she's got, uh, Roxette's got her new clothes on. Is it a little too ostentatious? I'm kind of like, oh, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty bold. I don't really care what people think, you know, at the end of the day, but I just, I just didn't want to be over the top ostentatious. I was riding it through traffic earlier today and I had a guy put his window down. I was lane filtering, of course, because you're allowed to do that here. And uh, a guy rolled his window down and he went, Hey, Steve, how are you going? <laughs> I went, Oh, right, well, that's sprung, so that's going to be a problem. Well, not necessarily particular. Well, it will be if I'm doing something wrong. But uh, there you go. That's uh, Big Bike Adventures. Rival Link have got the templates for it. Get in touch with Jack at Rival Link and he'll sort you out. They've got templates for almost all bikes. They tend to do a lot of motocross bikes. But, uh, yeah, I really, I don't mind that. It really stands out. I mean, if you're parked at a coffee shop, you know, on a road trip or something, it's going to be fantastic. I wasn't, I probably should have done them in white, but at the end of the day, you know, when I'm riding, the legs are going to be there, the bags are going to be covering up the back part. So it was really this front part. Oh, the other thing I'm doing, I'm actually getting rid of the big screen. So I've got a second um, a set of decals printed, and I'm actually going to get rid of the big screen because when I was riding with Chris, one of the things that I really didn't like about this was the amount of dirt and stuff that was getting up in there and the obstruction of vision. So I'm getting a short screen that's on its way. It's going to be tinted, but I'll put that um, 
put the new decals on that one as well. So it'll, it'll, I'll have a touring screen for when I'm doing a big long road trip and I'll have the short screen for when I'm off-road. The other problem with the big screen is when you're standing up off-road and the handlebars come right up at you, that screen does too. So I didn't want to be smacked in the face by that. Anyway, there you go. The BBA machine. Instagram, YouTube. And I'm thinking of putting up something on X as well, but uh, there you go. All the racks, she's ready to go. I'm going to put the Moscow Motor stuff on. There's, I've got a, I've, I've got another rack coming for that. I've got the um, the Moscow Motor luggage rack for that one going on there as well. So, um, yeah, good stuff. All right. Thanks for joining in. Uh, over and out.